Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. Hope you're doing splendidly magical. This red line on the SPY represents uh, at least what I think is probably worst case scenario for the SPY. It would be a healthy, comfortable dip um, if that does come in. And most likely it will. Uh, I mean, we, we're trading up into a resistance level short term. And realistically, we still need a nice retest of this ginormous triangle pattern that we broke out of. And of course, this is a retest gap on a weekly chart. So really my thought process on the SPY is if it does occur, and it looks like it probably will, buy the dip. Here's the cues and the cues today. Uh, a little bit of an upper shadow, new all-time high, some decent volume. People locking in profits up here. Speaking of locking in profits, Netflix hitting 384.25 today. It did hit um, my target, Ashley's target for Netflix. So exiting some of the positions on that particular stock uh, after this massive, massive run up on a monthly chart. I mean, you can see, uh, let me move this out the way. You can see just really huge, huge gain. Uh, look at this monthly chart. So, I mean, realistically, it just makes sense that you get some type of rest, some type of pullback. So, Netflix hitting a really strong target. It certainly could go up a little bit higher from here and probably will, but I think that this is a nice sell, especially with that amount of volume coming in at an all-time high. So, anyway, that is Netflix. Uh, yeah, let's dive into some of the stocks that were requested. I had a trader ask about what my thoughts were on Google, and this answer is simple. Uh, Google, for me, is one of the stocks that I'm always bullish on. In fact... Stocks that I am always bullish on. I don't know if you guys uh, have ever got a chance to read this article or not. Real life trading. It's kind of buried on the websites uh, along with the other thousands of articles I wrote a few years ago. But if you ever get a chance, let me see if I can track this one down. Um, I think it might be companies. Companies that I'm always bullish on. Ah, here it is. Nine companies I am always bullish on. There we go. And that was back on April 28th, 2016. Now, how had you bought, I believe, any of these um, in that amount of time, then you would have made some money. So there was Apple, obviously, Panera Bread got bought out, Google, Facebook, uh, Tesla, British Petroleum, Budweiser, SPY, uh, SLV, you definitely be flat on. So this one, and I do mention this is going to be going sideways for a while. But anyway, um, yeah, that's a cool article if you want it. Uh, I will put that in the description box as well. Um, yeah, so anyway, long story short, buy Google with both hands as much as you can afford, as long as you can afford. As far as shares go, it's more on the expensive side, does not pay a dividend, but it is unquestionable to me that over time, Google will continue following this trend, which is higher. Next on the list, D... GRE had a request for here's the weekly wisdom tree Mar emerging markets quality dividend growth fund oh yeah doesn't get more cool than that here's the long term moving averages and uh, wisdom tree I mean just based on this wave count it seems to me that it does a one two this is a wave three and it made a new all-time high uh, after it broke above this resistance of 2821 and this is likely a wave four of some magnitude. And inside this wave three, we have a one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, uh, or one, two, three, four, five. So I think we'll probably win some tree, come down eventually to 2462. Obviously, longer term, it could be a very good stock to own or an ETF to own. But uh, I think uh, I mean, it'll pause around 25 and a half. But really, I think 24 and a half is a little bit better of a longer term spot to snag it. V Y M I V Y M I Vanguard high dividend yield. So here's the weekly, and again, these track the markets. So as you're trading these, you know, if you're trading some long term stuff, for me personally, I think that these are fun ETFs to, to use. Obviously, much better than a hedge fund because that's what they're doing anyway, just kind of putting you into these types of uh, diversifications and, uh, and positions. But I like. Um, Vanguard International High Dividend Yield ETF off of the 100 on a weekly, which is 6236. Probably gets there. Here's the daily chart. And uh, yeah, we broke some good support. And it looks like we could trade down, roll over, and then bounce. So again, longer term, anytime you do a long term investment, you just find the cheapest prices to buy something, buy them, and then, you know, more or less hold on to it for a while. Uh, cool. Next request we had was EQLB. And EQ, this is Equilabs, uh, obviously a kind of a flash in the pan. So if we go to a weekly chart, you can see not much happening on the stock. 
But if you're zooming in, uh, to me, this looks like a bubble, an exuberant move, just a very, very quick out the gate type of, you know, type of run up. And obviously it's coming on substantial volume, but it is uh, for sure, without question, a penny stock at only two cents a share. So, I mean, buying this one, you know, for me personally, the the safest way, uh, safe way to invest in penny stocks is also another video that uh, you can check out that I have out there on the internet as well. Let me see how to do this. Click on videos and how to safely trade penny stocks. Boom. All right. So that's number two. So that one, I say, I say watch that video. It looks to me like this is, uh, if I'm doing a wave structure, some type of one, two, three, big wave four, where we probably come down to 0 0.0138. And then from there, kind of probably bounce around. So really, it looks pretty, uh, pretty normal for just a quick exuberant flash move higher on just some exceptionally high volume. Obviously, could have made a lot of money throughout this run up. But most traders are going to hear about it. Uh, most investors are probably going to hear about it right about here. They're going to buy. Stock goes lower. They sell. And then it has a little bit of a bounce. And then eventually probably goes with the trend and returns back to zero. Most likely. At least that's what many of them uh, end up doing. The other three that I had requested was CORI. Here is CORI uh, International. And the weekly chart. Again, just looking at the weekly because I never really look at this stock. And it does appear that it's trading into a support, which is good news. Here's the support, old res, old support, new resistance right there at 832. That's nice. And here's the daily. And it looks like you're forming a little bit of a double bottom. So the daily chart, I think this is the neckline at about 883. So if I was buying this one, um, I'd have a limit buy here. And my stop loss would probably be down here somewhere. And if I was doing it longer term, this would be a protective put rather than a stop loss. Uh, here's the weekly time frame, and if you want to do even a little bit of a longer term position, you can have the stop down here at 735 with an entry at about 885, and that way you have your stop beneath the long terms on a weekly, and to give that one a little bit of room to run. Next on the list, uh, AMC, my buddy Adam, along with many, many, many other traders looking at playing this one. So if you're playing AMC, bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, it's in an accumulation phase, and accumulations, you're, they're going to take time. And it did bounce off the 200. Uh, it does seem to me that some traders were probably having their stop right there, right below this little pattern. They just boop, got wicked in, and then it kind of flashed higher. So if you're playing uh, accumulation positions, right, trying to buy at a nice cheap price, then yeah, you're going to want to get that one as low as you can. And usually use protective puts rather than stops. Um, to simply hedge your positions and mitigate your risk. So AMC, nice higher low, nice looking move. Here's the daily chart. And uh, yeah, it actually does look good. Bouncing off the 200 with those traders being trapped. So again, this is a quick pullback. If you're getting in bullish, makes sense to me. And you could, again, you could have triggers for protective puts down here rather than stops just to avoid getting whipsawed out of a good longer term buying spot. Uh, last on the list, uh, as far as requests for today, we're OKTA, and this is the daily chart. Nice looking trend. Here's the weekly, and it's a newer stock, at least on the NASDAQ, and uh, you know, IPO not too long ago, but it's an unquestionable trend at this point. So you did have a decent gap and go right here that immediately faded, and uh, with a pullback to the 20, but you can't fight the trend, or at least you shouldn't, because it's your friend, and friends don't fight. Here is the uh, bearish candle. This is obviously the bounce. So if you're not in on OKTA, I would get in above the high of today. And if it does not break above there, then I would look to uh, buy the dip off the 50. And if buying the dip off the 50 does not work, which I'm willing to lose four times on a trade uh, trying to buy the dip. If it doesn't bounce off of there, I'll try it halfway into the, you know, probably around 45 and some change. If it doesn't bounce off of that, I'll try it off the 100. If it doesn't bounce off of that, I'll try it off the 200. And if that doesn't work, then I'll lose some money and uh, I'll wash my hands and come back to OKTA later. But the trend looks nice. It is a bullish trend. Uh, so, you know, be bullish. That's pretty much it for me, folks. That's all the requests I had. Keep in mind, the numbers are stacking up. Over 700 people have registered for the free trading week, the open house next week. It's going to be an absolute 
legendary time. Uh, this is going to be the Bonnaroo of the stock market, folks. Sign up. Be there June 18th through the 22nd next week. It's entirely for free. It's the open house. We're probably going to get over 1,000 registrants. I'm going to have to upgrade the webinar to keep it from crashing. It's going to be splendid, and I look forward to seeing you all there. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, remember, love life, live life, and trade it. I'll see you all Friday. Bye.